This is the lock picking lawyer. About a week ago, I picked this lock for you on video. It's a Freyden lock that its defining characteristic is this round keyhole with the key pins hanging down and the cylindrical keys. But when I picked it, I did not mention that this was not the first lock to have this type of arrangement. Before there was a Freyden lock, there was this lock. This lock was made by the, the Maxis company. I believe in the early to mid 90s. Maxis is a company out of uh, Vancouver, Canada, I believe. And they were the first ones to bring this round keyhole cylindrical key concept to market. As you can see, much like the Freyden lock, those key pins just hang down in that round keyhole. And then we have cuts on one side of this cylindrical key, which allows you to insert it in any direction, but the key, the core will not turn until the key pins and the cuts on the key align, after which it turns like any other lock. Okay, so we are going to attempt to pick this and then I will show you what's inside. The key for this lock is a little bit smaller, let's compare these keys, than the, the Freyden lock, both in length and diameter. However, the same Z-bar I used to pick the Freyden also works for this. And we're also going to use this thick Goso pick that's pretty much worthless for any other lock but works quite well in these, these round keyholes because it's stiff and you have a lot of control. Okay, one is, one is loose, two is loose, three, got a little counter rotation and a false set. Click out of four, five is stiff. I think we got him and a deeper false set. Let's go back to the beginning. Counter rotation on one, and yep, we got that guy open. I don't think I, I didn't mean to pick two, but looks like two is a very, very deep cut. So probably just that first or second nudge I gave him is what, is what picked him. Okay, let's take him apart and I will show you what's inside. Okay, let's take a close look at these key pins at the top of them before I take it out. It's only a five pin lock, but you can see there are six chambers. The last one is just a cup. It does not move, and what it does is receives a detent that gives this lock a center bias. Not entirely sure why they felt they needed to do that. I'm guessing for ease of key insertion, but frankly, I don't know what this does that a a standard pin in this position would not do. We also see a little narrowing of the key pin in number two. That is the lowest cut key, as we just discussed, um, and this is probably meant to be a bit of an overset trap. So let's dump these out. There's nothing unusual about this core. Let's, uh, let's arrange these key pins a little better. Okay, and let's pull the driver pins out. We certainly felt some counter rotation, so there's a number of spools in here. Only question is how many. One's a mushroom. Two is a mushroom. Three is a mushroom. Same for four. Same for five. And let's flip this around to get the that detent out. It's a ball bearing. It's under really heavy spring tension. Come on, come out here. 
and there's a this heavy spring here I can't get out I don't know why it won't come out but uh, but it doesn't come out nothing unusual about that core okay let me give you a close-up of this of these pins okay all of the driver pins are mushrooms all of the key pins are standard with the exception of number two that has that little overset trap on it and then number six has that that detent and I'm not entirely sure why they did that as opposed to just putting a standard pin in there which would have aided key insertion If you can think of another reason why they might have done that please put a comment below and then uh, then we've got our little overset trap on too so that's all I have for you today. This is the innards of the Maxis lock. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.